now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. It's Alex, it's the Ramble, goes till midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States and all around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, well, Larry Bubbles Brown really is the ultimate Luddite. I mean, he still uh, has Pony Express take his mail across the country. He doesn't like to use email. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. You know, Jerry Seinfeld did the funniest bit about uh, <laughs> mailing a letter or a check, uh, just the way he described it. It's so funny how it's just, you write something out, put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, walk down to a post office, and just the way he tells it. Well, uh, well I, uh, what I used to say was, uh, you know, uh, you know, they, they just raised the, the price of a stamp two cents. It's now up to like 50 cents or something like that. I go... Boy, what are they trying to do? Rob us blind? You know what? The it, just think of it. Think of what they have to do. For fifty cents, they come and you drop it in a mailbox, and they come and pick up your mail, take it to a mail uh, post office. They then sort it, put it in the right sorting. It gets in another truck, and they drive it out to the airport, where your letter is put on an airplane that has flown to the city that your, uh, your letter is going to, then they unload the letter, they take it to Resort. another sorting <laughs> facility, they take it, uh, that sorting <laughs> facility then has a, a, a mail truck that takes it out to your post office, and then your post office comes and brings it to you personally. Wow, are they robbing us for 50 cents 50 or what? Cents. <laughs> you know. That's the is that essentially what he did with his bit? Yeah, yeah. It's a, you, it's amazing that you would think that we're lucky we get ten percent of our mail. It's not. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been saying that for years though. It's maybe the best bargain we have. I mean, imagine when it was like remember it was like three cents or five cents yeah. or something. I think it was four cents when I was a kid. Look at what they had to do with your mail. I mean, it was what a great service, you know. Yeah. And it's it still is. Uh, but I mean now. We send stuff, well, you wouldn't know this, by email, and it gets no. to people really fast. I've oh, done email. <laughs> well, you, I know you read email because I send you one every time we're going to do one of these things. Yes. But why do you resist, Larry? What is it? Do you feel you're going to lose your reputation? No, I don't. I think I was thinking about that the other night while I'm just, I've literally been thinking about high-speed Internet for years now, and I don't. There's some. Blo I don't think I want somebody from Xfinity coming into my house. That's the only reason I can figure. <laughs> really? Yeah. Although I should get a smartphone. But well, well, look. You know, if you want to avoid having high speed in your house, then get a phone, an like an iPhone, and you're hooked up to the internet with that. You know, and you can use that. That might be the easiest way to do it. I mean, that way you're using you're using the uh, the you know the 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 system, uh, which now is 5G and very fast, uh, and uh, you could do all of that, you know, and you can send email on that, but how, like, I send you email, how do you get it? I get it here on my old dial-up. Yeah, you dial it up, and then how long does it take for the letter to come down? Yeah, boy, sometimes it can take, like, uh, <laughs> two minutes for the letter to open. <laughs> yeah. If it's got artwork in it, it probably takes really well, then forever. It, then, it, then, yeah, then you go make a sandwich. And well, don't you think, Larry, you're the last... Well, actually, you said that there's a statistic about the number of people who don't have high-speed Internet connections in their home. Three million in America, and they say, believe it or not, 50,000 in San Francisco. Really? Yeah. Yeah, but that's a small amount if you think about it, because how big is San Francisco? You know. Well, it's like 700,000 people, so yeah. it would be one in... One in 14. One in three and a half. So. One in three and a half or something. Anyway, it, it, it really is like uh, it's time for you to, you know, do your thing. You know? 
Or don't you want it? No, I want it. It's just, just sitting there waiting for things to open up is just, and I can't, I can't, it'd be nice to see video, you know. Yeah, be ni- that'd be nice. That would be very nice. But, you know, uh, I, I mean, would, the thing is that, that there's a whole world out there waiting for you. <laughs> but you, I'll be dead soon, so you, it doesn't matter. You know, you're going to be so amazed by all the wonderful things that happen once you have uh, the Internet, because now you can get, uh, oh, I don't know, people sending you spam. That, that, you know. Yeah. Um, you, you know what everyone says to me about how you got to get high speed. You know what the number one reason is? Porn. Porn, exactly. <laughs> you, you, Someone told me the Internet would collapse if it weren't for porn. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, photographs at the speed of jerking. <laughs> it's, you know. Um, what, you know, what is it when we, when we think that the best thing that uh, the Internet has given us is porn? I know. Yeah, I mean, but you know, I mean, you don't get certain things. See, I mean, you're 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 kind of devoid of having things like Netflix. You know, like if you had Netflix, you'd never leave the house. Really? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on there, and I'm I'm getting to like uh, HBO Max is really good. Which, if you do, you have HBO in your home. No. No. Good God. Why did I even ask? HBO. Uh, I thought HBO wasn't any good anymore. <laughs> no, it's pretty, they started this HBO Max, and it's got a lot of stuff on it, you know. But I, uh, uh, gee, I, I don't know why I even ask you those questions. I know what the but answer I, is going to be. But I remember the first computer, I think it was the first year I started stand-up, 81, that was when the first PC came out, am I correct? Was IBM had one? Or? Well, I got my first computer in about maybe, what what year did you say? I thought they came out in 81, and they kind of, there was a big fanfare about it, and they kind of flopped because nobody had any use for them except small businesses said they were good for inventory. Yeah, I bought mine, I think, in like my first one in about 83, 84. And uh, what it was, my business manager uh, and I, I, I saw, I, I, I know what I got. The first computer I ever had was an Atari. That was it, yeah. A- Atari came out with a uh, computer with a keyboard that would, basically it was meant to play games, but much more sophisticated games than had been done before, okay? And um, uh, they included a keyboard, and you could use it as a computer, you could actually put programs in there like VisiCalc and so on. And I got a couple of bootleg programs and was playing around with it. And I showed it to my business manager and I taught him, showed him the, the spreadsheet and he had never seen anything like it before. And he started playing with it because he intrinsically knew how to use a spreadsheet because he used to do them all by hand, right? Mm-hmm. And, a, and using a calculator to add up the rows of numbers. So he f- kind of figured out how to do it, and he put up a row of numbers in there, and then at the bottom he did a little thing that told him add it up, and then he put in all the numbers, and they were all added up at the bottom. And he goes, where do we buy one of these? I said, well, this is kind of like a toy because it only had like 40 characters across the screen. I said, but IBM makes a beautiful one. And we both of us went out and bought IBMs. And uh, we thought we were living large. Because we, we we got them with two floppy disk drives, these big paper floppy disks, and um, and then later on we actually had a hard drive put in that only held about twenty megabytes or something like that. But he, uh, you know, that's that was us getting into computers, and that was pretty yeah. early. I mean, uh, anybody out there? When did you get your first computer? Probably ten years later, you know. So, uh, uh, yeah, I was out there in advance, and I loved all this technology. You know me. You remember me. You were, oh, yeah, you were always on top of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember I used to bring in, I got a portable uh, uh, computer, and I brought it into the studio and used it in the studio. And the, uh, the management told me, don't use that computer while you're on the air. <laughs> well, not, now you go into any studio in America, and there are nothing but computers there. You're doing everything on a computer screen. So, I mean, uh, uh, 
And I finally tell them, well, no, I'm going to use the computer because, quite frankly, I need it for the show, and you can gripe all you want. I'm going to use it. And now, of course, if I told them they resisted me using a computer, they'd go, why did we do that? So, But in spite of all of that, I've kind of become a Luddite because even though the technology is terrific, I do a show here every night, and I've got to, it's got to, everything's got to be working right, right? And I, things break down constantly. Like sometimes 10 minutes before I'm supposed to go on the air, the computer will suddenly decide to crash or do something. And I'm going, you know, there's got to be something better than what they've created here, you know? We should have, our technology should have advanced enough that these things are crash proof. But they're they not. Be, yeah, they're you not. Think. You know? Uh, and, and then you hear about the Russians and the Chinese coming in and hacking everybody. And you go, well, how good a system did you actually create here? You know? So, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I get, you're lucky that you have nothing. You're not wired into this because there's nothing to go down on you except a woman. You know, <laughs> that's even l less. Likely. And even <laughs> even now, that's a little d more difficult than it used to be. Do you, do you have a girlfriend? I never ask you this. I do not. No. No. Well, and you're not gay. No, no. not that I know. Of. Not that you know of. Uh, Love the women, although I think it's hard to meet women during a pandemic. So it's very hard. Very hard. Well, it's not hard. It's difficult. Okay, uh, but. You know, I mean, it, it um, in fact, I, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about this. I may do this the next time with you. I don't know if we have enough time left to do it now. But when I had comedians on, they came fully formed as comedians, right? You mm -hmm. know, Larry Brown was doing jokes, and Stephen Kravitz was doing jokes, and Stephen Pearl was doing jokes, and Bobby Slayton was doing jokes. But I never asked any of you. How did you come to this? What, where were you born? What did you do? What brought you to being a comedian? Other, than, you know, you could have been anything. You could have been a railroad conductor. You know, anything you wanted to be, and yet you chose to get up on a stage and tell jokes, and how that all came about. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and what in you made you dis I mean it, this is the most let's face it it's the most nebulous profession you can possibly think of next to radio announcer you know? <laughs> right. well I mean you could yeah. ask me what well, well, you know why would you decide to go into broadcasting you know <laughs> and I, I remember uh, I asked you once I said I thought stand up comedy was probably the lowest rung of the sh entertainment ladder and you said no, no radio is because <laughs> He's in show business. They can actually see you. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I mean, radio is the lowest, I think it's one of the lowest forms of show business, but there are lower forms, like selling my pillows on television. <laughs> you know. Um, uh, I the, think radio is so, such a great medium, though. Yeah. Well, I, here, here is, what's the lowest form of show business? Perry Kurtz. <laughs> uh, now, that's a joke that you get, I and I get, but the audience doesn't know who. Just if you have a chance, folks, go to YouTube, look up Perry Kurtz, and you will see maybe, I think, ostensibly the worst comedian we've ever known, isn't he? Really? <laughs> I, I think there's worse. But really? He's still around. I know he's still around. This was a guy who went on, what, Love Connection? Love Connection, yeah. Yeah, uh, and then what he would do for... Ten minutes of his act to show you the videotape of him on Love Connection. That was that was part of his act. You know, people are expecting a guy to come out and make some observational comedy or whatever, and he's showing a videotape. It, it's, or he's multimedia. <laughs> he's multimedia. Yes, but maybe he was ahead of his time, and I just didn't know it. I hope he's. I hope he's not listening to this show. Well, actually, I hope he is. Do you think Perry Kurtz knows how bad he is as a comedian? <laughs> I mean, uh, it, he's, uh, I don't know. I mean, you've, you've known bad comedians, right? Oh, yeah. And they don't well, know how bad they are. In fact, a lot of them think they're better than they really are. 
Well, the one thing I've noticed in this business was people that are really bad never know it. Mm -hmm. And people that are really good are usually the most insecure ones. You know, that's that you're absolutely correct. I mean, you're, you're an insecure comedian. Very insecure. Right? Yes. Uh, uh, I, I think you've always had a certain insecurity about yourself, as, as well you should, because, you know, you're pathetic. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know what I'm saying? It, it, there's something about, about uh, a good comedian that is just tortured, just tortured. Uh, and and there's something about bad comedians where they, they, nothing phases them, you know. No, they, yeah. they, the really great comics I I saw many of them were when I started out they were almost almost afraid to get up on stage and the really bad ones couldn't wait to get on stage. Yeah, yeah, it's very strange. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, people people probably are sitting there scratching their head at what we're saying here, you know, but it's true. It's absolutely true. I mean. Um, uh, you, you're terribly insecure. Every comedian I've known who's any good has certain insecurities. Was that funny enough? Was it good enough on stage? And the bad ones would come off and say, I killed. Yeah, exactly. By the way, why do we use terms like that w about audiences? Oh, I killed them. I think there's a lot of violence and uh, humor. I think yeah. that's so you got the punchline, I killed, I slayed, <laughs> I destroyed. It's like the it's like a war up there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, do, uh, let me ask you this, okay? Do you feel that when you're up there on stage, we'll go over time here. It doesn't matter. All I have to do is talk to the other people. Um, that you have, um, uh, that, that, now what was I going to say? Oh, about, uh, oh, yeah, well, when you get off stage, uh, do you feel that when you're on stage, you're at war with the audience in some respect? I always feel like if it's when you start out, it's going okay. I always feel like nervous because I feel like I'm always on the verge of losing them. Yeah, you never do. But though. I did. You when never I started out. I did think when I watched comedy, I thought, "Wow, it, it looked like a battle up there," and I did think, "Wow, it's us against the audience." And then when I started in San Francisco at the Holy City Zoo, the audiences were actually very friendly and supportive, so that kind of surprised me. So it, it didn't feel like a battle then. Do you think it was... Uh, now, the Holy City Zoo, folks, was what we call... What, what kind of, how can we describe what they did? It was a, a club that was about the size of your basement. The, but Yeah. I mean, the, the audience was almost on stage with you. Literally on top of you. You yeah. had tables, like, right up against the front of the stage. Yeah. And it was... It was a workout place. I mean, a comic would show up and they'd say, "Do you have any openings tonight?" And they'd say, "Yeah, let's do put you on at midnight." And then you would go up and you would try material. You weren't expected to have the same professionalism as say you'd have to have it at one of the bigger clubs like the Punchline, right? Yeah, you could do anything there. Do anything, try anything, uh, try and 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 kill, as it were. And it was it was like a gymnasium for com comedians, if that makes any kind of sense to people. And they really, I mean, that that club, uh, you go there, see some amazing people, you can see some terrible comedy too. But the audiences, I think, there were with you because they knew you were you were you were trying new material. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where you'd start out as an open micer. So that's yeah. where I felt, yeah, the audience was very supportive. Whereas if you went to the punchline, those audiences just wound up paying like 15 bucks to get in, which was a lot of money in those days. And and they got their arms folded saying, make me laugh, motherfucker. Yeah, and that's, you know. that's when you felt like you are at war down there in a room like that. So. Yeah. And and uh, uh, so did it, did it probably scared you more to play the punchline or oh, one yeah, of those yeah, venues. You didn't. I was really afraid to go. I remember the first time I I did the zoo for months when I first started out, and one one night I did the other cafe, and I was so freaked out about doing a different room. But uh, yeah, yeah. You remember the other cafe? So. Yeah, right, right. So I mean, it, 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 but uh, you know, the life of a comedian. Everybody thinks it's really easy. That guy just goes up on stage and says funny things, and uh, yeah. that takes what to get what thirty minutes of material. What you need if you're going to be a headliner, 
45 minutes of material? 45, yeah, it takes forever. How long take you? To, how long did it take you to get your first 45 minutes worth of I material? I think I did my first 40 minutes set. I was probably four years into it. Hmm. And, and what you got? It was, I mean, it wasn't good. It was 40 minutes, but it wasn't like tight, great set. Yeah, well, uh, you, would you agree with me? Not every minute of your set has to be killer. Here we go. No, although I feel like it should be, because I get nervous when it's not killing. Well, yeah, but uh, but you got to you got to learn to pace yourself. No, no but you got you got to build in dead spots, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you do. You know, you, you go to some material which is not as taxing on people because people uh, get people to laugh for forty-five minutes. Think about that. Yeah, it's not re- it's the, not feasible. <laughs> it's not feasible. So what you do is you then create dead spots, and then you come back and then hit them at the end with all the really funny stuff. Yeah, and I saw, you know who was great at that was Kevin Pollack. Would, uh, he'd start out strong, and he'd kind of go up and down for a while, and then he'd always have a huge, strong finish. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you know what they, you know who did that also? The Marx Brothers with their films. Um, what's his name? Uh, the uh, Thalberg. Irving Thalberg brought them over to MGM. And they had had m- successful films, mildly successful films. I mean, when we think of the Marx Brothers, Duck Soup is the greatest movie practically ever made that was a comedy, and yet that thing did not do great business. So when they came to MGM, he then did like a night at the opera, a day at the races, and what he would do is they would do their comedy, but then they would put in the middle of the film, they would put an operatic singing number. Or something like that, you know, and mm-hmm. and it would li- literally was meant to just kill the pace for just a while, so people could then come back to the comedy and start laughing again because it's a lot of work to laugh, and yeah. it, and that's essentially I think was one of the gr- and they, that was the most successful film they ever had for exactly that reason, is that they created this pacing. I mean, you always wonder when you watch that film. Why, why are they suddenly stopping all the comedy to do uh, an operatic number? Well, the reason was they wanted a, a, a comedy killer, something to just give people a rest. Yeah. So. Yeah, in a, an action film, you can't have things blowing up for ninety minutes. You, you gotta. Y- yeah, you gotta have not uh, have somebody kiss somebody or some yeah. th- something like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's something I think is lost on some directors. I watched some movies. This guy is Zack Snyder's re-edited Justice League. I don't know if you know about any of that crap. But it's been re-jiggered and re-edited to four hours. Jesus. And it's all action. <laughs> and I'm going, are you out of your fucking mind? I mean, who can watch that without getting exhausted? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway... Hey, listen, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, Larry. You too, as we will go into the wonderful world of show. <laughs> yeah, wonderful world of show. But next time I want to talk, when I talk to you, I want to find more about your the the young Larry Bubbles Brown. Oh, I and, can tell and, you why, yeah. We'll and how you, went, how you went from an embryo to a comedian. <laughs> you know, somewhere along the line, there has to have been a glitch in your life. There yeah. was, and yeah. you'll learn about it. Okay, we'll find that out next time. Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Alex. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ba-da! Thank you, Larry. Thank you very much. Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll have my get on again next week. I love Larry. I just I tell I say that every time that I, how much I love Larry and I, I just uh, think the world of him. He's and he's been an old friend for so long now and has been supportive of me, and uh, I hope I've been somewhat supportive of him as well. Anyway, I think it's time for us to go to our uh, our people here, as we uh, admit them all to our little program. As they all come popping in, as you can see them popping in there, there's, uh, there's Vernon Nunn tonight, and there's uh, Jeffrey, and there's uh, Brian, and there's Charlie Wallace, there's Trucker Steve, and uh, then there's me. Um, Vernon has signed tonight. What? 
Charlie's where is his sign tonight? What, Charlie, what? I, I... Sorry, what about my signs? He's wearing he's wearing his sign tonight. Oh, I see. Let's see here. Let oh. me let me see here. Let's sarcasm. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Yeah, because one of, one of the signs is sarcasm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's good. It's very good. You, you, nice to pick up on that, uh, Brian. You're astute, as it were. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, man. Ah, well, it's another one of those days of, of just my eyes burning all day long because of the, uh, the uh, uh, pollen is out there now. And it's 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 getting thick out there, and I'm trying to avoid it as much as possible. But I does anybody? It, it, nobody takes this stuff, do they? Wait a minute, hold on a second. Where is it? Here it is. Ah. This stuff, Flonase, or this is the uh, the Kirkland version of it, and it. Uh, yeah. Uh, it doesn't seem to work. <laughs> it doesn't seem to. Am I right, Jeff? You've, yeah, tri you, you've tried it, right? Right. It's good for you. Yeah. When you put it in, and then you gotta somehow get rid of it. It just it just doesn't. It's uh, annoying. It, it, well, it doesn't. It doesn't seem to uh, used to work for me, but it doesn't anymore. So I don't know what the story is on that yet, you know. But uh, anyway, so and on top of that, I've gotten this rash up here. You can't see it because I put makeup on tonight. So that I covered it. Oh, it's just, it was just, for some reason, my forehead has suddenly decided to have a rash on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it's not easy being in show business. You have to always look your best. <laughs> Why didn't you put makeup on your forehead when you're wearing a hat? Yeah, you got a hat on. <laughs> no, 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 but here, here. It was oh. like, it, it was very, today I noticed it was very red. You know, so I don't know what to do. You know, if I if I show people here, wait a minute, hold on a second. If I just go to this, see, well, I know the makeup's covering it up pretty well. All right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I can't complain about it. All right. Anyway, <laughs> how y'all doing tonight, huh? Good. I, okay, that you sound took excited. A big ride on my bicycle today. Everybody sounds excited tonight. Good. Good to hear that. Um, I just uh, single uh, man tonight. You're a single man tonight. Yeah, uh, Tiffany and uh, Adrian went down to LA for the weekend. So. Oh really? Woo -hoo! <laughs> uh, uh, really? Gonna be like eleven o'clock tonight. So you're gonna invite all your girlfriends over and everything? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. That'd be looking like a gift horse in the mouth for crying out loud. You know. so the guy, no, the, the, the kids are happy because they're just playing games tonight. Now, when you when the, when when your wife isn't there, and you get in bed, do you oh. like I I immediately when Marjorie isn't there, she gets up in the morning and she's gone. I immediately go diagonal in the bed, <laughs> and I grab her pillow and sleep on it. Uh, uh, now, do you do that at all? No, but it's no, but it's just weird when she's not in bed. Yeah, when she, it's just weird. When she's not in bed with you. Well, you see, you go to do you both go to bed about the same time? Uh, we go into the bed. She goes in a little bit earlier, and then she's on her phone till like one o'clock at night. Yeah. Well, you see, me, I get out of here about by the time uh, 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 Jack posts his show. If I'm lucky, it's like twenty minutes past one, New York time. She's been in bed since at least 9.30, right? You know. I think we're uh, going to be uh, uh, given a concert tonight. Are we by you, Trucker Steve? What, have you got your, you've got your, your guitar there? Or what is that? Wait a minute. He froze. Oh, he, oh, now he froze on us. There we go. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's guitar, right? Or is it a bass? No, it's a guitar. That's not my first guitar. Oh, oh, it's your first guitar, the first one you ever owned, or it's your first guitar and you're just learning how to play it? I just bought it yesterday. It's my first one. I see, I see. But do you play the guitar? I'm starting to learn. Do you, do you play the guitar? No. He's kind of breaking no. up on us. Do you play the guitar? I 
Uh, not before, no. Oh, okay. So, in other words, you bought the yeah, guitar, I just it. and now you're going to teach yourself how to play the guitar. Do you want me to tell you what most people do when they buy a guitar, because with the intention yep. that they're going to learn how to play it? They fool around with it for about two days, and that's the last they use it. How many have had that experience here before? See? Especially with kids. <laughs> uh, you know. Do you play an instrument, Brian? Anybody here play an instrument? Okay. Okay. You used to. You used that? to. Uh, uh, yeah. And what was it? Well, I, I, I played guitar. Yeah. And then I also learned how to play the bass. But I never used it. Learned how to play the bass. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, but you never used it. Nope. You never had a. Uh, never were in a band or anything like that. Nope. I was a bass. But you just. I was in, in high school. We had a, a whole bunch of basses, and we could learn how to play. And if you're a guitar player, yeah. But if you're not bass, basses, I could see where you have a guitar in you. Have a have a lovely senorita next to you, and you're singing and you're playing and whatever, but it, nobody drags out a bass to woo a woman. No. You know, they don't sit there going boom, 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 boom. You know, she's just gonna go, hey, I'm I'm gonna go over to the guy who plays a guitar. <laughs> so obviously, you weren't doing that to get laid. Not in uh, high school that I went to. There were no female. Hmm. Oh, Just really? Them. Yeah. What happened? All the guys killed the females? Or what was the story with that school? It was a, we call a technical high school. What, oh, you know, well, today in a technical high school, you would have girls. Yes. Yeah. But, but, when, but in those days, girls just didn't, didn't, exist. didn't do it. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. OK. All right. That's interesting. That's very interesting. So anybody else going to call us tonight? What is this? Is this going to be it here? Because um, I, uh, I've been tired as of late, and when there are a lot of people, then I don't have to work as hard. Of course, I can ask Josh for some kind of opinion about something, and we'll get a good five minutes out of him. Right, Josh? Sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. Um, if you, uh, how do you think this uh, thing in Georgia is going to cut the mustard when it comes to the Supreme Court? Yeah, I don't know if that'll hold up very well. I mean, you can't even, it is against the law now in Georgia when people are waiting in line to vote for you to give them water. Right. What, what was that all about? And then... No voting after 5 o'clock in the Are afternoon. Yeah. Well, if people are working, when do they get to vote? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the states can choose to close their polls whenever, but I mean, like, if you're in line, you still get to vote. Did they change that? Or, or I mean, like, if you're in line at 5, do you still get to I, I didn't. Well, it just it. says they close the polls at 5. You know, because, I mean, you know, like, in all the other states, it closes at 7 or 8 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, if you're standing outside and you're in line and it's 7 p.m., you know, you still, you know, you still, they just sent, they just sent someone out, my understanding is, to, like, mark the end of the line or whatever and then turn people away after yeah. that. So, yeah, I don't know if it still works that way or if they tried to change that, too. I mean, yeah, that, that would be awful restrictive. I, I mean, I, they're, I think they're going to be on their way to, you know, probably finding out that this stuff is unreasonable mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, they're going to get away with it for a short period of time. Yeah. And then, you know, and, and the easiest way to really teach them a lesson is for the people in Georgia to overcome it somehow in an election cycle. I mean, I, I agree that they shouldn't okay. have to. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's bullshit that they have to and all that, you know. Yeah. But they are where they are now and they do have to so they got to get it done and then just don't wait two more years for the court to rule on this just get rid of these people, yeah you know? so uh, so don't just get rid of them fucking route them you know i mean yeah hopefully yeah. do they say what their reasoning was 
I mean, do they do they think that people in line going to give you water, then you're going to vote for that person, you know, if they say something, vote well, for that? I think their reasoning for that there is just the fact that in the past, people in Georgia and other places have had to stand in line for hours at a time, and, you know, they don't have water or don't have food or get hungry or got to go to the restroom or whatever. Uh, it's just something else to make it where people say voting, ha, that's too hard. Fuck that. You know, I mean, I'm not going to do that. So then who will vote? Well, you know, old white people who are retired and things of that nature. And those people, a lot of times, will vote for old white men who are Republican. Yeah. You know, or, yeah. or old white women with a fucking broomstick up there. And ass. if a person is going to take, uh, yeah. make the choice between voting and earning a living, right. they, they're going to opt out for earning a living, if I'm not mistaken. They can leave early from work. Yeah. They'll vote when they want. They will time going late or whatever. Where well, other jobs, you don't have that flexibility. And all of this was because the powers that be in Georgia felt that the election was stolen from them. What? How many times did you constantly re-add those votes and they all came out to exactly the same? Yes, Vernon. To me, the most egregious part of the law was that the state legislature gave themselves the power to get rid of any board of election that they didn't agree with. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, so it, every county would have its own board of elections. Right. And if, let's say, in if one... That county, if that county went Democratic, then the state legislature could step in and appoint their own board of elections and recount the votes their own way. I can't see how this would pass muster once it goes to the Supreme Court. I just don't, you know, I can't I can't see even a right-wing Supreme Court voting for that kind of stuff, you know. But you never know, you know. Um, well, I mean, you're right. I mean, you, you don't, but I mean, the thing about the court is, I mean, I don't think you can look at their members as like a traditional you know, Republican or Democrat, they have a judicial philosophy, and some of them are very conservative, but the thing is, is a very conservative judicial philosophy on certain issues, mm -hmm. I think voting many times is one of them, and like criminal law, for example, is sometimes so conservative that it wraps itself around and almost comes into a good agreement with people on the left, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. which is why you sometimes get decisions on issues where people you know, get big eyes when they look at it, but it doesn't necessarily surprise people who understand how the court does its business yeah. and interprets law. So, right. you know, that's how you get these seven to two decisions or whatever on things where you think, wow, you know, so-and-so justice voted for that or whatever. But, I mean, I don't think they're going to be very successful with it because, you know, it's pretty overtly obvious that their measures down there are, are, are not just suppression, they're a return to policies that, you know, are stemmed in a, a, a racist tide from 75 years ago, 100 years ago even. So, I mean, hundreds of laws have been passed since that period of time, and they're, they're flying in the face of pretty much all of them. I mean, they're going to have a terrible time with it. So I hope they get embarrassed, but I hope they just get routed in two years. And Well, you know, there are how many other states now in the country that are trying to pass similar statutes? Oh, right. Like 23 so, of them. Yeah, so... Dozens. So let's say this one goes to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court says you're full of crap. Do you think the other states will give up on that or they'll all try to do it anyway? Well, they'll... They'll probably give up because, I mean, if they do pass, they, they won't be able to pass any law at that point that is that will fly in the face of federal statutes. I mean, don't get I, I mean, don't get me wrong. They'll they'll change wording or certain things and they'll keep trying just like they do with, you know, like abortion regulations mm -hmm. or gun laws or whatever, you know, and it'll still be this constant battle. But. I mean, look, it can be ended by people just making sure that these lawmakers are not, you know, returned to office. So, you know, if you're out there and you 
complain about these things rightly and you're unhappy about them rightly you have to work to make sure that these people are not allowed to hold power i mean because these philosophies are not steeped in any sort of democratic idea i mean they're they're hogwash ideas that are straight out of a you know a, a jim crow playbook i mean you know and look i just got back from mississippi a few days ago uh, you know i messaged you when i was down there i mean yeah. i can tell you that in in the corner of tennessee and in northern mississippi uh you know the part of the jim crow era is still alive i mean you can still buy a nathan bedford forest little figurine in the visitor centers for certain civil war battlefields i mean you know i mean it, it, i sent patrick a picture of it i was like you know you want me to pick you one of these up you know i mean <laughs> you know so i mean these glorified down there still yet today and you still drive buy houses i mean you know i'm on my way to shiloh battlefield where the union won a victory and i passed four or five houses within the last mile of the battlefield flying their confederate flag and you know i mean it's like you didn't just lose here you lost the entire war and you know they still have revived this lost cause idea so i mean it's still alive so i don't i'm not surprised that these lawmakers down there did that that's i just wish people would understand you know like how important voting is and and people who say things like well you know i don't care who the president is it doesn't really matter or whatever well no you got four years of trump and look this is what they got you i mean if it weren't for him getting elected the last time it would never have crossed the minds of these people in georgia after their loss this time to start this this is all part of his overall legacy okay this is all part of his uh you know what he leaves behind his his trail and path of destruction is not over just because he's not in the white house any longer in fact he could be dead tomorrow and his trail of destruction will continue for miles yet before it's over with and before you can repair the damage so think about that next time you think it's too hard to vote or whatever yeah yeah well you just have to do it yeah um i think the other thing that's too well, wait a minute. Let, let Jeff and then then Charlie. I I think that a lot of people don't give a shit, don't vote, regardless of who's voting yeah. and what the issues are. They don't give a shit. And I don't know in Georgia what the percentage is. I, I don't know at all. Well, yeah, but they do have a right not to give a shit. Uh, but, but they yeah. all, but they also should have the right to vote if they want to, and without reservation. And you know, uh, I'm an old guy, okay. And if I have to stand in line for two hours to vote, which is the case sometimes in a lot of these places, I might want some water. I mean, I remember <laughs> when we were waiting in to vote uh, this last year. We waited in line that took us about an hour and a quarter. And while we were in that line, there were people coming by offering us water, offering us donuts, you know, the, some kind of sustenance to keep us going. And also, for a guy my age, they, where are the bathrooms? Yeah. You know? I mean, that, that, the, the, they say you can't go to the bathroom? I don't think so. But who knows? And while you're in the bathroom, there's a sink there. Grab some water. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, I, it's just insane. Just insane, you know. Uh, I mean, what 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 are the Republicans are so afraid that people are going to be able to vote because they know there's not enough of them to win, you know. And uh, uh, it, it's a question now of how the public reacts to the Democrats doing this to them. You know, are they going to be bothered by it? Yes, uh, Vernon. Oh, wait a minute. Charlie, <clears throat> maybe Charlie had his hand up first. Let, let Charlie, wait, for, let yeah, Charlie, Charlie go first. first. Yeah. Excuse me, Charlie. I'm the, sorry. The problem, yeah. The problem is, it's not hard to vote in the white areas. There are white areas of Texas. You can go in and vote in ten minutes every every election. So they don't give a shit if you make it harder for somebody in a black area and they got to wait in line five hours to vote. They don't give a shit about that. They're gonna go in and vote the Republicans in anyway. And unless you're willing to sit there and wait five now without any water, wait for five hours to vote, 
You're never going to get anybody in that's going to do anything well, about well, it. Up until now, do you think the reason why Texas has always gone uh, red is because blue isn't really allowed to vote as easily? Definitely. Okay. You don't see these long lines in, in the red areas of Texas. Right. These, and, and these districts that vote Republican, they do not have the hour or two-hour lines to vote. Yeah. Well, what's happening in Georgia is this governor who just signed this thing into law is up for re-election next year. And they yep. say he's going to have a rough time of it, that he's going to have a real bad time of it. And plus, you got that Stacy, what's her name, Stacey Abrams yep. down yep. there? She's a firecracker. I mean, she just, you know, she she knows how to get out the vote, you know. And believe me, she's going to do everything she can to make sure that guy isn't governor. And by the way, do you remember how he got to be governor? He was secretary of state, and he disallowed he a bunch of votes. And, and he, yes, he was in charge of the election. He was running he for purged. office, and he, he and, yeah. and he purged a bunch of votes. 400,000 votes, mostly black. Uh, why? Well, how how is a guy allowed to get away with that? They couldn't until the Supreme Court ruled that we didn't need the Voting Rights Act anymore. That's when all this shit started. Okay. John Roberts said, "There's no more, there's no more racism. We don't need to have the Voting Rights Act anymore." And yep. the first thing every one of these states, including Texas, did was start. Well, I, are we are people. we talking about racism here, or just denying the vote to people who want to vote Democratic? Both. Yeah. Well, the, both because because the people of color generally vote for Democrats. Wow. Gee. Heaven forbid. <clears throat> heaven forbid. You know. Did you, did you hear that uh, Kemp signed that bill behind a closed door and one of the uh, black legislators yes. from the yes. state yep. went to the door to knock on the door and the state troopers arrested her and charged her with two yep. felonies. Yes. There was not a black person in that room where he signed that bill. And she just, all she wanted to do was get in there to say something or whatever. And she just knocked on the door. Anything. That's all she did is knock on the door. And, and they arrested her. her. And I saw it. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't even like she was resisting the arrest. No. You know, but she, she, she wanted to, she was knocking on the door. And they, and they wouldn't say anything when she asked, what am I being arrested for? They wouldn't say a word. Well, because they didn't just have an answer. carried her away. They just carried her away. Wow. What happened to her, though, eventually? They, she went to jail. She went to and jail? Raphael War yeah, and Raphael Warnock, the new senator, mm -hmm. went and visited her in jail that day, that night. <sighs> and Raphael Warnock was, was on talking about what's going on with... Uh, the, the Congress and people are saying, well, where do you stand on the filibuster? And he says, you're asking the wrong question. The question should not be, where do you stand on the filibuster? The question should be, are you for or against democracy? Yes. It's amazing. It's just amazing. Uh, you know, my friend Shecky today, I was talking with him and he said, you know, he said, I honestly think this is the end of America as we know it. He says, this country isn't going to be around for very much longer. He said, we probably won't live to see that day, but we will, we, you know, we're not going to be doing it much. We're not going to have much of a country much longer. My kids will. You know, that it's that, it's, it's, it's that bad. It's getting that bad. Uh, hello, Alan. You're a little late tonight. What's, uh, what's up? I'm, how's my microphone? They find microphones fine. So do you have an do you have an excuse? Uh, late from uh, dinner. Sorry. Late from dinner. Oh well. God forbid you should eat dinner instead of participating I in this uh, in this. <laughs> I'm a bad lost boy. Cause. What? Don't send me a Christmas card. I'm a bad boy. Yeah. How's everybody doing? Fine. Fine. You actually started without me. I can't believe it. Yeah. Oh well, it, we, I should have said. And I'm sorry. We're not going to talk to anybody till Alan's here. There you yeah. go. Uh, man, oh man, my <laughs> eyes are just trash tonight. Oh. <clears throat> I don't know. I just, I, 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 every, every. It's just been, it's been terrible lately. During the winter, when there's no pollen, my eyes are fine, and then all of a sudden the pollen hits, and I am, 
I'm in Sounds bad like shape. you have allergies. Well, I have an eye operation I have to have to do something with oh. the lids that will kind of prevent this from happening. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's just uh, horrid, you know. And uh, uh, plus, I'm exhausted all the time lately. I just, I think, how many of you out there, because of COVID, feel somewhat exhausted? Mm. Yeah, right. Yeah. You get up, you're tired all day. Yeah. And you just go, why? You know, and then you realize that you just, uh, you know, I... Like I went, I took a walk today. Well, walk. I went down to the grocery, down to the drugstore to buy something for Marjorie, okay? Because she's still not feeling well. And it turns out it may be her neck that's actually out of whack a bit. So she's got to get, she had to get one of those collars. So I went into CVS to get a cervical collar. They don't carry them. Wow. You know, they're like a little $20 item. It's not like, Something, yeah. you know, you got to go to an orthopedic store to get. But anyway, so I walked down, I walked back. And uh, so here I am. <laughs> you know? And, uh, but I'm, I, I just, and also, I don't know about you guys, I'm getting awfully tired of using, a, uh, wearing a mask and walking. It's, it's just, it's, it's drudgery. It mm -hmm. really is. I know we've got to use it, and I'm not telling people not to wear a mask. But don't you think that in all of this that's been going on, that somebody would have come out with a better mask or something, you know, uh, up the technology a bit? I like my mask. Huh? I like my mask. It messes up my beard. Other than that, I'm okay with it. Well, mine, you know, if you've got a beard, it's a little harder to wear a mask, right, Kev? You find it hard? No. What's that? I said, do you find it hard to wear a mask because of the beard? <clears throat> oh, yeah. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Pain in the mouth. And you don't get a full seal either. With, no, with, no. Because you've got a beard. So, you know, I mean, uh, and you've got a beard too, uh, Jeff. Uh, how about you? Is it a pain? I hate those masks. Yeah, yeah. No. We, ha we hate them. They're necessary, right? Yeah. And we're not implying to anyone you shouldn't use one. But, geez, they're a pain in the ass. I mean, I'll be glad when this part of it is over with. Now, let me show you something here tonight. See what this is? Can you guys see that? The audience can probably see it, too. That's the blue label. Bennett, something or other. Yes, plus one. Yeah. Be it's sure it's hope it's still. Well, this is a, let me tell you what it is. This is a proof of vaccination. Oh. And if oh, I if, if I if I bring this down, hold on a second. If I if I push on this, here it brings this up, oh. which is uh, you know it's got a barcode up there. See that? See? I just have a photo of my card. Yeah, yeah. Well, but but this is this is an actual thing that I went online and I put my my name in and my date and the date that I got my my second shot. And a few other things. Mm -hmm. I know, but what I'm saying is, I don't know. This is a barcode that will be accepted in airports and things like that. It's Maybe. The, it's the new model. It's it's called Excelsior for the state. They gave of New me that York. card, and I went to Staples, and they laminated it for free. Yeah, we're, uh, we're I'm oh, having wow. my, I'm having mine laminated, but this will is also proof that I've had the vaccination, because you have to go through the uh, state uh, database or whatever in order to get it to say to your, uh, you download the app to say to the app, you're good to go. Yes, uh, uh, Vernon. Have you seen where Krispy Kreme's is offering a free donut to yeah. anyone who brings their little card? Yeah. And yeah. you can do it every day if you want to, and you yep. can go to any Krispy Kreme store. So you could go to this store and get a donut, go to the next store and get a donut. Now, it's what happens when every day? Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm <laughs> eating donuts all day. Yeah, but, <laughs> but how long does this last? Because eventually everybody said. in America is going to be, you know, is going to be uh, is going to be vaccinated. And when that happens, they're going to lose money because nobody's going to pay for a goddamn donut. Well, uh, what they're saying they're doing it for is to encourage people to get vaccinated. Get vaccinated, yes. Okay, and once everybody gets vaccinated, to hell with you, we're back to where where we were. We'll never yeah, get and then you'll be point. addicted to their donuts. Yeah. That's right. I see. I see. Exactly. Uh, and they know that they have people going to go in there. They're not just going to get a donut. They're going to buy a couple more or a dozen. Yeah. 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 
That's yeah. like Taco Bell giving away a donut for every steal in the World Series, right? <laughs> oh, r- oh, really? <laughs> did they do that? Yeah, they did <clears> that. <throat> they used to give away, uh, what was it, Taco Bell used to give away tacos whenever the Rangers hit well, a home run. Well, there was about a penny of meat in there, isn't there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And about two and cents worth of meat. Ta- and two cents worth of taco. It's okay. Well, do you remember when I think it was, was it Jack in the Box had tacos? And it turned out the tacos were made from kangaroo meat that was shipped in from Australia. Oh, no, that, was, uh, that was somebody else. I don't know if that was. Was that Taco Bell, maybe? No. Nah. I never heard that. There was Jack no, in the Box. It was Jack McDonald's in the Box. McDonald's had kangaroo meat in their. In their no, but it was Jack burgers, in the Box. They? Yeah, it was Jack in the Box. Yeah, oh. and, and it turns out it wasn't true, but the meat was coming from Australia. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> and who knows? You know, kangaroo meat may taste good. I remember when I was yeah. at uh, in, in Lillehammer for the Olympics, uh, I used to go next door, and they had these hamburgers. I bought like two or three of them a day because they were just delicious. They were incredible. I'm eating three of them at a time, and then... Uh, my uh, newswoman says, bring me five of them. And I bring her five of them. I mean, they were big, but they were, they were delicious, most delicious hamburgers I've ever eaten. Turns out they were reindeer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got a Sweden. Buffalo's good. Hmm? Sweden. Buffalo? I go to Sweden. We Buffalo? What, what, what were you saying, Brian? Oh, uh, well, when we go to Sweden for work, they have a specialty place that have really good reindeer. It just tastes like regular meat, though. It's, 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 yeah. Yeah, it, it, they always say something it, it tastes like chicken. Well, then why not just serve me chicken, you know? Uh, the tacos, hmm? two Jack in the Box tacos, two for 99 cents. Yeah. Gee, I used to eat those forever when I was 16, you know, first driving till. Well, when I wasn't worried about my weight, I, I, my go to food would be if I, if I was in a mall, go to the Taco Bell, get some tacos, right? Yeah. Then run run over to Orange Julius and get an Orange Julius. Do, do they have those everywhere in the country? Or, or are they out of business now? In New York they had them. But are they out of business oh, they now? Texas, yeah. Oh, they're, they're, still, in they're, still, they're still around in Texas? Yeah. Oh, okay. Didn't she go to the, what was the... What place is that that the girls hopped on the thingy? <laughs> you know, oh, oh, that was... That was uh, oh, all right. oh what, it, what was it? Uh, it was... Uh, Hot dog, hot dog on, on a, a stick. stick. Yeah. Hot dog on a stick. And they'd water. have women, women wearing these very nice tops, and they would be jumping up and down, mixing the orange juice, and you just lemonade. sit there. Lemonade. lemonade. That's right, what it was, yes. And uh, we enjoyed watching them a great deal. And I'll bet you were there for five hours, Alex. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it was in a mall, and they had this place where you could just sit. It, you didn't have to buy anything, and... I sat there for a while, okay? So c- call me a bad guy, you know. So, so Alex ate Bambi, huh, in a taco? <laughs> oh, well, no, we didn't well, eat Bambi's Bambi. Right no, no, I ate Rudolph. Oh, I ate sure. Rudolph. Rudolph, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, but, uh, no, it was good, though. The reindeer was just, it was spectacular. But once I found out it was reindeer, I couldn't eat any more of them. You know? Oh, Mm-hmm. Well, because you get this attitude. It's reindeer, you know. And they say we've been eating it all along and enjoying. Oh, you, it. Ought to, going, you ought to have peacock. That's even better. Have you had peacock? Yeah. Now wait a minute. What do you eat, peacock or peahen? <laughs> no. Uh, well, uh, it, the, the bird is called a peacock. It's got big feathers, and I don't know. No, no. There, there, there is a peacock, which is the male. Yeah. And then there is a peahen, which is the female. Didn't you know, I didn't that? know that? How about that? You wouldn't call a female pea a cock, right? <laughs> yes. Because a cock you is a, so. a a cock is a ma- male fowl. Okay. The hen is a female fowl. So you didn't know there was such a thing as a pea hen? Never heard that before. Yeah. Never heard it. Uh, haven't you seen now the now the NBC peacock is a peacock because they have the feathers that do that. Yeah. You know. The male has the feathers. Yeah. Male has the feathers, but so uh, what does the female have? Uh, babies. <laughs> you know, chicks. And then there's pe- that bird in Australia that's like the most dangerous bird in the world. The emu. Emu. 
No, no, no. They're like an emu, but they're called a, a capybara bird or something like that. Kookaburra? What is it? Kookaburra? Something like that, yeah. They got like fucking claws that'll just kill you. They're, some guy in Florida imported one and it killed him. Oh. Wow. Nice. Yeah, some of them are dangerous. Though. Just Google most dangerous bird in the world. It'll come up. Boy, Australia's got, it's so beautiful. It's got 10 of the most deadly snakes, 10 of the most deadly mm -hmm. spiders, the deadliest jellyfish, crocodiles, alligators. I don't know how that place is so beautiful and ends up with 10 of the worst things. Well, yeah. well it can be beautiful and deadly at the same time. I mean, I, you know, a friend of mine's kid used to raise tarantulas. Now, his kid's moved out now, but he has me come over and look at the new tarantula that he got. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm not into spiders. I don't like them, but in a, in a glass enclosure, I'm fine. I go over and look at it, and I tap on the glass, and the damn thing stands up on its hind legs and starts, and I go, wow, that's really unusual. And my friend says, yeah, I've never seen a tarantula do that before. I Google it. It's the Brazilian wandering spider. <laughs> it was the most deadly spider oh, so, in the oh, world. Oh, so it wasn't a tarantula. Oh, it was a his tarantulas really look like tar one. It was a little, you know, eight legged furry thing. Tarantulas, that... truth be known, are not dangerous. Uh, yeah, get bit by one, they hurt. No, yeah, but no. you gotta really work to get bit by one. No, they're not dangerous and they're quite docile and they're not aggressive. And that's the reason why they use them in movies because everybody goes, Oh, that's creepy. You know, but they, yeah. they, you know, you put them all over Indiana Jones's back and that's fine. Yeah. You know, some the of them here. Some are more aggressive springtime. than others. What, what, what were you going to say, Kevin? I said they're all over the hills here in the springtime. Yeah, what, we had them out in the hill country here. Yeah. Yeah. All over. That's not a particularly but, dangerous spider. But I mean, spider. the kid, you know, had this this stupid spider crawling all over his arm 15 minutes earlier before I got there. Jeez. And I'm like, where did you get this from? And I, I you know, this is five, six years ago. And he says, Oh, he got it online. It was Tarantulas R Us or something like that. He said, I don't know. Really? And, uh, yeah, and I said, Tarantulas don't usually get up on their hind legs, but that's a trademark, looking at it, of yeah. the Brazilian wandering spider. And he's like, no. And so he he put it, you know, he put big leather gloves on, put it in this, and took it to UC Berkeley or something. And they said, yeah, you got a Brazilian wandering spider. How'd you ever get it in the country? Yeah. You know? One bite of that is enough to kill like ten adult males or females. So, oh, so, so, where did he get it? Did he buy it at a local. He bought it online, store? and somebody shipped him a Brazilian wandering spider from I don't know Brazil, I guess. They look like a little tarantula. They're um, and they're cute. They just they just so want. Uh, what do they do? They wander. Silk so Road, yeah. Hmm. Well, it, it it's just got a really deadly poison. Hmm. They're actually studying the poison because I guess when you get bit by this thing, you get a really painful erection. And so they're studying the venom. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on one minute. Isn't that where they got Viagra from? Was some spider venom? No. No. <laughs> so what are they? They're looking at this as a possibility for uh, impotence? Yeah, erectile dysfunction. Yeah. Yeah. So you, what you do is you go down to Brazil, get bitten by a wandering spider, no, 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 and you get a hard on and die. Yeah, and, and as you're dying, you look down at your erection and go, "Why now?" Yeah, really? <laughs> you know, come it couldn't have been that hard 15 years ago. Why when now? When I needed it. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, Josh, was you? What battlefield did you go to? He visits battlefields. Where did you oh, go, yeah. Josh? Which was the one you went to last week? Uh, we went to sh well. We went to a couple, but the big one that we visited last week was Shiloh, mm -hmm. in and southern, in southern Tennessee. How do they maintain these things? They maintain them like they still existed as a battlefield, or do they are they just yeah. sit there and everybody goes, "This is where it took place." No, no, they're. I mean, it depends. Most of them are pretty well preserved. The ones that you know you can still visit. Uh, a lot of them are done by the national park service so the national park service doesn't just have national parks so you know the department of the interior and then the yeah. national park service under its purview maintains national parks yeah national historic sites yeah national battlefields national mm -hmm. military parks you know national recreation areas and several other designations so all, all battles 
like like World War One, Civil War, all that kind of stuff. Well, only, only anything within the borders of the U.S. or its territories. Mm -hmm. um, but so m most of them are preserved. Many of them are preserved by the Park Service. A lot of them are preserved privately. Mm -hmm. Some of them by state governments, but a lot of them are private. So. Uh, there's an organization called the American Battlefield Trust, which originally began as the Civil War Trust, mm -hmm. but now it calls itself the American Battlefield Trust because they also preserve American Revolution sites and War of 1812 sites. Mm -hmm. uh, they raise money and they buy up land and they uh, you know, preserve the land. They do everything they can to put it back to the way that it was mm -hmm. at the time of the battle, so they erect fencing of the time or, oh okay so, okay so they make it look the it would have been. they make it look like it would have been back then they do everything they can to do so minus right? the dead bodies and things like that right right which so, of the which of the civil war battles was the most deadly well gettysburg gettysburg, I mean, gettysburg was the largest mm -hmm. and, you know the uh uh you know, it was the largest and everything. So, you know, like Antietam, you know, had about 23,000 casualties or so in like a 12-hour wow. period. Um, wow. You know, so Antietam was, you know, the deadliest battle at the time. Shiloh at the time mm -hmm. that it happened in 1862 was the deadliest battle to have occurred at that period. And it also, it surpassed all previous casualties for all wars in America before it. So the casualties on a single day at Shiloh, well, actually over two days, surpassed all casualties from the American Revolution, the Mexican War, the War of 1812, all of them combined. I, I mean, more you. people died in a day and yeah. a half, basically, at Shiloh than it died in all other previous wars combined. So at the time it took place, it was, you know, it was a huge deal. But they're, they're maintained by the Park Service. I mean, usually what they do is you know, once they have the land, they yeah. they usually put a road through that you can take, you know, self-guided auto tours or mm -hmm. you can walk or the really large parks like Gettysburg have, because it would be so busy, they will have a tour that you can take that's basically on like a bus, you know, to reduce traffic. Right. Um, and then a, a, a licensed guide will, will narrate a tour as you go or whatever. But the smaller ones usually just have... There's not necessarily smaller in terms of land, but like smaller in terms of visitation will have. This has like kind of been like a hobby with you, hasn't it? Well, I mean, a little bit, yeah. But we also go to, we go to all the sites that are run by the National Park Service. Okay. So, I mean, the Park Service runs maybe, I don't know, I, I think I read like 600 or so. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, we're kind of on a quest to go to all of them, you know. So, I mean, we're fairly far along. I've been to a lot. Uh, I mean, so we also visit all the national parks. Well, I remember when I went to, you know, I think it was Bryce Canyon that I went to. Yeah, we went to Bryce last yeah, year yeah. in Zion. Uh, and uh, oh, Canyon. Zion. Zion was where I went. Yeah. When I went in, they said, how old are you? And I said, well, I'm 65. And they said, oh, good. You can buy, you can, here's a pass. You can yeah. get into any park in the country right. with it. And they, I, I didn't even have those. to pay for it. Did you yeah, I got, I got one, one of those. those. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and you can get into any park in the, in the United States. You have to be sixty five to do that. Yes. Yeah. So fuck I got one you. With my handicap placard. Missed it. You can use your handicap placard. Yeah, they gave me a, a one for yeah. the Cal state of California, all the parks here, and the one for the uh, all the park national parks. Wow. So Not sixty five. And, you, and, you know, and this was something that Trump tried to kill. He tried to. Uh, yes, he did. Yeah. But yeah. Get Bill oil. They wanted to sell off oil rights to uh, what was that that place in Utah, Big Bear or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Bear, bear. It well, he also here. wanted to take one and cut it in half and use half of it for something. I don't know, condos or whatever, and the other half would still remain a, a national park. Well, speaking of Trump killing people, do you know that he's killed? He uh, uh, found uh, prisoners executed more than any other president. In the United yeah. States. Oh yeah. Oh really? Yep. Yes. You mean uh, the fe people who were in federal prison who were sentenced federal to prison death. and on yep. death row? He actually conducted, and the last one was two days before the inauguration. Yep. Wow. Yeah. 
Well, do you and, do you expect any less? Pro life. He's pro life. Do you, do you expect? Did, did you hear? Did you hear that Virginia has now done away with the death penalty? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Virginia Virginia has the history of executing more people than any other state in the country, and they did away. It wasn't. With it wasn't penalty. Texas because Texas. I thought it was Texas. No. No. Virginia has been executing people since 1608. Oh, really? Yeah, but I'm talking about in the last, no, since I mean, 1900, total. Texas has killed more people. But oh, to yeah. total people executed, Virginia led the way, and now they have totally done away with the death penalty. I think I remember one week in Texas where they had like six executions or something yep. in one week. They used a yeah. couch. It wasn't a chair, it was a couch. You wouldn't know what they did is they they decided to put an electric chair and have people sit on each other's laps, you know. I mean, it, I mean, but I mean, it it it, uh, it. I didn't know that about Trump, but I know that he had let all the executions go on that were going on in we federal like prison. We had like seventeen years without a federal execution before Trump started doing. It. Wow, son of a bitch. Yeah. Anybody ever see that documentary about, uh, I think it was called Dr. Death, about the dude who was like the expert on uh, the electric chair? Mm hmm Yeah. You know, fascinating. You he, well, he was the guy who built them. He yeah, actually yeah. was the go-to guy for building them. And yeah. then he, he lives in Austin, Texas. Well, no, then he went to then he got sucked in. he got sucked into that neo-Nazi or that right. Holocaust denier guy. And he yeah. went to Germany and said, uh, nobody could have been killed in these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were, you know, the, the, it, it had to be a lie because nobody could have been killed because in this I manner. I found the, traces of uh, cyanide, but I didn't. Mm. What a fucking idiot! He went looking for traces of, of yeah. Zyklon D, you know. Right, yeah. Uh, but uh, and I can't remember his name now. But he was he he was the guy that built all the implements of death in America. Wow, you know. really. Yeah, that's I think every electric thing. chair, every electric yeah, chair sure. uh, had like his his a placard on the side with the name of his company. You know, so. Doctor Doom. Yeah, that's what they referred to him as before Charlie Wallace, yeah. of no. course, <laughs> came along. And then, by the I way, Charlie uh, was Doctor Death. <laughs> I, I think I've been calling him Doctor Doom lately, because oh, okay. because I was, a, I was I was that's why I made that up. Yeah. Because at Marvel, I uh, for for a Marvel uh, show at Carnegie Hall, I was Doctor Doom, so I uh, I was I was Doctor Doom before Charlie was Doctor Doom. And speaking of which, do your job tonight, Charlie. I'm telling you, the infections are going up. We had seventy nine thousand new infections today and seventeen hundred wow. deaths. Seventy nine thousand new infections or yep. just infection? The US, wait, the whole US. wait, wait, it's wait, went wait. Down below fifty thousand, and now it's going up to 70, 80,000. Uh, no, Most but, but, of them are young You say 79,000, that, that's, that's a total number. That's not 79,000 more than yesterday. Yes, that's 79,000 more than yesterday. Oh, really? The total is five, almost 550,000. Well, you know, it's it, it, all those kids down in, uh, down in uh, Fort Lauderdale, good for them, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. By the way, Most you know. Most of the new... Most of the new infections are in the people in their 30s and 40s. Yes, you know and, why? And, and in Chicago, I believe. Because they're not vaccinated yet. Yeah, yeah. but in, in Chicago, no, what you saying they're not vaccinated yet, but they just weren't getting it anyway. And now they are getting it because I think this new form of, you know, the hybrids of the yeah. disease are, are starting to kill them off. <laughs> so, you know. I just, I just, I'm just amazed that they, they don't say to themselves, you know, if I, if I, if I get it, that's not bad. I won't die. But wait a minute. If I go home and grandma is next to me, she will, you know, and they, they're so selfish and so unknowledgeable, yeah. you know, yeah. and I have a right not to wear a mask. Yeah. You have a right to wear a mask. I guess that gives me the right to pull out a gun and shoot you because that's what you're doing. You're aiming a gun at my head. Um, how's everything out where you live, Vernon? Is it crazy? Actually, the, you're the, in Kentucky, uh, right? Yeah, the new infections have gone way down, and our positivity rate has dropped below five again. Oh, really? Mm. Did you see your uh, your uh, Senator Rand Paul uh, going after Dr. Fauci? Oh. Yeah, that, that was a hilarious. What, was it, but wasn't it embarrassing? 
I mean, yes, if I were was. from Kentucky, I would just want to bury my head in the sand somewhere. Isn't Rand Paul a medical doctor? Yes, he, no. he's, an he's an ophthalmologist. He's an ophthalmologist. And I think the American Medical Association should take his license. It, no, and it, 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 an uncertified ophthalmologist. What, oh, what do you mean well, uncertified? Media. No, he did not join the association that most no. ophthalmologists joined. He formed his own. Yeah. Oh. oh boy. Are we the, opti- the blind ophthalmologist association. No. <laughs> oh boy. But, but yeah. yes, he is an embarrassment, and he's up for re-election in 2022. And do you think he'll win? In the state of Kentucky, yeah. What is Probably. what Guy is Cornyn one? You know, Cornyn, I, we're expecting you to make sure he doesn't win. I can't believe that intelligence goes by state. Okay, I refuse to believe that, and I refuse to believe that people in in Kentucky are so stupid that they've got not only made their mistake once, they made it twice because what? Mitch McConnell's from there. Yeah, okay, yeah. so you got Mitch McConnell, Rand Paul, the only two senators, and both of them are the most terrible people in the Senate right now. Okay. Most hated. Mitch McConnell is the most hated. So in the what? Senate. What? Where does the stupidity? I wonder how that happened. Where does the stupidity come from? Is there something in the water down there? <laughs> explain, <laughs> explain to me what's happening in Georgia then. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, exactly. What's happening in Georgia is is even worse. Jim Crow is back. Well. He, well, I, you know, as Stacey Abrams said, this is like Jim Crow with a with a suit and tie. Absolutely. This, this yeah. wouldn't be happening right now if Trump had won in Georgia. But the fact that he didn't win in Georgia, they're trying to create a situation in which uh, nobody other than a Republican can win in that state. Yeah. Hey, he won that, in that, Texas, that's, and that's Texas that's is doing the right same now. shit. Disgusting. Who won We're in, in te- 2021? You racist people, get some new brain parts. Jesus. Yeah, well, you know, I mean. Uh, All they had to do is uh, put that, that signing yesterday in black and white, and it would have just looked just like the 60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's terrible. It's well, uh, Tennessee, Tennessee, the state of Tennessee just passed a law that would uh, give um, the uh, father the right to veto um, a woman's abortion, mm-hmm. whether or not it was rape or incest, too. So, in other words, you know, basically. They're proposing. People- they're proposing that law. I don't think it's passed yet. It hasn't passed yet. Oh, okay. I thought it. I thought it already passed. Yeah. Just well, in proposal. Yeah. Wait, so basically, you've, no. you you rape somebody, Marco. and you knock her up and said, "Hey, I <laughs> want the kid." I mean, now you're gonna have to have the kid. <laughs> Can you believe that? Wait, Even if I'm in jail, I raped you. I'm in jail, but you got to have the kid. Oh boy. And uh, you got to keep the kid and take care of it. Hold on a second. We have two people with guitars. Are you holding a guitar now? John, I got a guitar. Yeah. Oh no, I thought you were. I thought you were holding it. it looked oh, like you were holding it. Oh god. Oh, oh, oh god. God. He was getting his peacock out. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, okay, so so try and play something. I want to see if you can play. <laughs> oh man, take a look. <laughs> no, I don't want to. I'm too well, embarrassed. Wait a minute. No, go ahead. Oh, that sounded <laughs> okay. Come on. You got off to a good start. Yeah, not bad. You know. Oh, man, take a look at my life. <laughs> so I, I know. I'm, I think you better stop. I'm going to turn yeah, my chair. I, yeah. yeah. I, yeah I think. Sometimes I'll go down on the uh, BART station, you know, late at night. And people will give me money, you know, but I think they're giving me money. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You go down on the BART station? (laughs) Yeah, just by myself. Is that a new thing in San Francisco? (laughs) Going down on the BART station? Going down on the BART station? Yeah, you go down into the BART station and you practice. And people give you money sometimes. Oh, oh, I see. I thought it was a new sexual thing. I think, I think they would give you a lot of money to stop. That's what I mean. (laughs) (laughs) Now, now, and and then we've got trucker Steve here, who just bought a guitar and has no idea how to play it. Have you, have you learned how to tune it yet, uh, trucker Steve? No. So you have an out of tune. Ba- basically, I had a couple of friends back home that play guitar, uh, oh. so I'm gonna take it to them and they can show me how to use the fingers and stuff. <clears throat> you actually probably should Bless learn you. first of all how to how to tune it. You know. Because if it's I, not tuned, it, the, it's useless. You think John ought to get together? 
over the weekend and, and come up with a heavy metal song. Well, yeah, well, you know. I already bought a second guitar this morning. You bought a second? Wait, uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. An sure. eight, yeah. An Eddie Van Halen uh, 5150 Frankenstrat guitar. Okay, but let me ask you this. You haven't learned how to play the first one yet. <laughs> so what can possess you to buy a second one? An investment. Huh? This one right here. Oh, okay. But it's a male thing. Don't, you know, you go shopping, you get a screwdriver. You got a dozen of the same screwdriver at home. Yeah. 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 Right Eddie's on. famous uh, red, black, and white uh, striped uh, guitar. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I'm, I'm, maybe I'll go out and buy one, too. I can just say There you go. <clears throat> you know how to play one, Alex? No. Oh. No. Uh, yeah. uh, I, can't, uh, I came from a music. Uh, I came from a musical family. My father yeah. was a musician, my aunt, my uncle, everybody, the whole uh, family on my father's side were musicians. Yeah. They, got, they got great lessons on YouTube. This is a bass. Mm. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Oh. There you go, Jeff. I know, but I never learned how to play that kind. But Alex, did you know any, any instrument? Any instrument? Uh, my father, you know, because my fa my whole family were musicians, I, I I do have a musical sense. I do have fairly good perfect pitch, okay, uh, and I can, uh, um, uh, you know, I'm very I'm I'm musical, but I don't play an instrument. And um, my father tried to get me to play instruments, and first he taught me the violin because that's what he played. And I failed miserably at that. In fact, they got me a baby violin when I was a little kid, hoping that would help, mm -hmm. you know. But I didn't, and and I I didn't like the violin because I was lazy and I didn't want to hold it here, you know. <laughs> it was like you know, it was like I, I held it. In fact, it's interesting. I know how to hold a violin because I have a, a guy here who who it lives in this apartment house who sells them and has three Stradivarii. In his oh, in his house, and and he brought them out and showed them to me, and I said, "Can I put one under my chin?" And I put it under my chin. He said, "You sure know how to, you know, how to hold a violin?" And I, I told him about my father, and that if my father were alive right now, I'd be on the phone to him saying, "Guess what I've got under my chin right now?" Yeah. Uh, and it was Peacock. literally the one that I had under my chin is worth six million dollars. Oh you know? God, that's okay. scary. Near yeah. six million dollars, really? Did six million. Like budget? Yeah, yeah. They, they had a cheaper one there. I could have bought for three million. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a uh, you know, it's a uh, it, it's it, it's quite a uh, uh, thing. Okay. This it, is an it, old jazz guitar. Yeah. Well, I mean, I felt so great holding the Stradivarius. Hey, wow. listen, guys, that's it for the show tonight. Wish there were a woman in here. I, whatever happened to what's her name? Uh, well, if I remembered her name, she might want to call. Charlene? Uh, she, uh, huh? Uh, Charlene, yeah. Uh, Charlene, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what happened to her. Yeah, anyway. Hey, listen, thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Brian, thank you. Vernon, always <laughs> a pleasure to see you here. Ooh. Charlie, if you weren't here, it wouldn't be a show. And uh, I hope that uh, Trucker Steve uh, learns how to play that guitar and can come back here and run rings around John Larkin. Uh, Josh Wheeler, thank you so much. And of course, Alan, always good to have you here. Kevin, my old pal, love having you here. And of course, John Larkin, you know, our friend in the worst part of San Francisco, the Tenderloin. Hey, right in listen. the heart. Hmm? Right in the heart. Right in the heart. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave goodbye back at you, okay? And that's it. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Let me uh, get rid of them all here so that they can go on their merry way and remind you that next, over most of this same gap net, is a little program called The Intersection with Jack Bishop. And he'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. That's the place you sign into. In the meantime, I'm out of here. I'm out of here till Monday at 4 when I meet up with a bunch of people and do a little show on Facebook. And then we'll be back here again Come Tuesday night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, 
if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, wear a mask out there. Be safe. Good night.